have a question for you. Okay. In fact, I have a few questions, but I'm going to, you can answer short, long, as, as long as you want. Okay. What do we need to do for proper economic development? Wow. There's a lot of things. Mm -hmm. It's not a simple answer, mm -hmm. but uh, I think it's all doable. That's the first thing. No mm -hmm. matter how long the list is, it's achievable because Madagascar has a heck of a lot going for it and uh, much more so than many other places and there's no reason uh, not to develop. Some of the things that have to happen, um, the cities, cities are 80, produce 80% of the world's GDP, they're real engines of growth, they're where people can come together, they can specialize because there's enough work to, to support specialization. If you get the cities working, uh, it creates opportunity for people who are in rural areas to come into the city. Then you can begin to deploy sort of modern agriculture in the rural areas and increase productivity there and you get a virtuous cycle going. Uh, people are thinking that uh, for a country like Madagascar you should uh, develop the countryside but you are more or less saying it's first the cities. Well, you can't... Because we have like a non-working cities at the moment, right? The cities are not as productive as they could be here. Uh, for political reasons, I mean, for example, you know, basic services within the capital city don't uh, don't exist to the extent that they need to. But I'm not saying that you ignore the rural development side. I'm just saying that you, if you invest, if you focus all your efforts on the rural side without investing a lot in the cities, you're not going to have create this virtual cycle that you need. So you can't do. Uh, you got to do both. Uh, you can't do just one or just the other. Mm -hmm. Um, but the rural areas, you know, in Madagascar right now have very serious issues with malnutrition and uh, other health issues and educational issues, um, land holding issues, mm -hmm. and you can't, uh, you know, you can't wait for the cities to be good before you start tackling those. You have to start tackling those now as well. Mm -hmm. And talking about education, though. Um, in a country like Madagascar, and I think that there are a few like Madagascar in the world which has so much natural resources, people here don't seem to think that having so many diplomas like you do, for example, or uh, competence, uh, I mean, you, they don't seem that this is really important because you can be rich and famous without diplomas. What is your position? You can certainly be rich without diplomas, and you can certainly be famous without diplomas. Uh, the United States has lots of people in both categories, but all in all, your population as a whole needs to be as educated as possible. You know, I think, uh, in fact, for Madagascar, I think it has, maybe it has more than two paths, but there's at least two developmental thrusts it should be pursuing. One is with the extractive industries. It has graphite and thorium and uranium and vanadium and low sulfur coal and oil and gas and all sorts of stuff here, right? So that makes sense to, to leverage those, particularly when the rest of the world really wants it. Um, but on the other side, Madagascar has a whole bunch of incredibly talented young people um, who can be doing knowledge work software engineering, all sorts of things. And uh, to do that knowledge work, you need some education. You don't necessarily need, you know, diplomas per se, the way they're done in the West, but you need to have an attitude that I'm gonna educate myself, I'm gonna, you know, get access to the kind of knowledge which is gonna move me forward and that's gonna be a priority for me. So that whole attitude of self-education, but education is incredibly important. And I don't think it's missing in general here. I think it sometimes doesn't get, uh, as you're saying, you know, people don't view it yeah. as, as having the impact or as, you know, as important as it should be. But, because uh, people are basically poor and what they are striving for is money and uh, celebrity and richness. And so uh, if they can achieve that without even going to higher education, uh, they will just be happy, and Malagasy yes. people are quite easily content 
So that's that's why that question, because um, you know education is like we should, you say is very important. No. I don't know. Can I differ with you a little bit? I okay. don't know that Malagashi people are so easily content. I do think that many people, because of their poverty, have a much shorter time window for their decision making. And I know that Malagashi music is really terrific. <laughs> and it can really take the sting out of a bad day. <laughs> but I think people here have the same hopes for their children yeah. uh, as does any well, people. Well, you know, coming to that, coming from a, a, a more of a cultural background organization, I myself get uh, confronted by a lot of people mm -hmm. saying that our main problem for economic development is because of our culture and our tradition. And uh, what do you think? Because I have my own theory, but what do you I think, think is that true? No, it's nonsense. Mm -hmm. well, how There's... do you explain that? Well, when people blame stuff on the culture, they assume that culture is this absolutely rigid thing that defines you and your future forever. And culture is not. Culture is malleable, it's changeable. Culture is all the unwritten rules that allow a society to conduct its business. And those unwritten rules uh, are sort of a reflection and uh, they, they're sort of related to the written rules. And the easiest way to change the unwritten rules is to explicitly change the written rules, mm -hmm. right? So if you take a look at, for example, uh, Madagascar's constitution, right? It's a document. Um, it's followed, uh, some say, more uh, <laughs> in the preach <laughs> than, than, than line by line. Um, if Madagascar had a constitution which uh, was developed and tailored to its specific situation, that set of rules would have much more impact. They would be written down and then the unwritten set of rules about how politics is conducted, how the judicial system is conducted, etc., would begin to change also. <laughs> and with that would come changes in the way people think uh, about everything else. Yes. We have to be ready for change. In fact, this program is called Mila Change. Ah, okay. And Mila Change means we need some change. But what I really think is the Malagasy people, and I think the world, have to be ready for a change all the time. And I think I totally agree with you in that, that culture is a, is a, a steerable uh, uh, way of getting things done. And I wouldn't have done what I've done if. I was told that you need to stay like in a museum and, and uh, keep the traditional music alive. It wouldn't have been alive. So thank you very much for your uh, participation in Mila Change and uh, hope to see you soon. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.